BA, what's up? What is happening? Coach Q in the house. You're killing me with the background right now, bro. Hey, man, look, I know you're a life coach now, but I want the kids on the basketball court to see what perfect form looks like. I want them to soak that in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what? Steph Curry's second greatest shooter ever, ever out of Dickie was in college. I keep telling people that. They're just not believing me, man. Hey, I, I, I was a witness. I was a witness. You would give Steph a run for his money. Yeah. Now, the vertical, now, I'm not sure you're teaching anybody about jumping. Uh, is that? Yeah, yeah. I used to say I couldn't jump over a phone book. With this generation, <laughs> I just tell them I can't jump over an iPhone. That was yeah, it. So, so you, you, like me, you didn't start at South Lakes, right? I didn't start? Or start. I mean, start school. Like, weren't you? Didn't you move to South Lakes? I moved in, uh, when I was twelve. So I went to. Langston. Oh, okay, okay. So, yeah, I'm a little bit of a transplant. I moved from Jersey when I was twelve. So I went to Langston Hughes, and then right into uh, and right into South Lakes. So I spent all four years there. Oh, so if you moved there when you were twelve, you were, I'm sure you were highly influenced by the the South Lakes basketball program. Oh, huge, uh, huge. I, I still remember the the day when uh, you know Grand Hill caught catches this alley. Jerome Scott, you know, and they win the a championship. I think it was like the district the district district championship. So I, I remember that. I was in eighth grade sitting in the stands uh, on a select team with uh, guys that, you know, more, you know, Troy's, you know, age range, like, you know, Cam Howard and a group of those guys watching those games. But, yeah, it was phenomenal. And then the legacy you built with it was just awesome. Like, you started that. You and uh, you were on the same team as Michael Jackson, right? If I remember no, right. no, no. That's just it. I moved. Michael was a senior my freshman year when I was living in Texas. So he graduated when I moved to South Lakes uh, the summer going into my sophomore year. So I never got to play with Michael. But it was very influential because I didn't think I was going to play basketball when I moved to Reston. And then uh, Pops got me into the um, – uh, basketball camp there because he wanted me to meet some people because it was the middle of the summer. Right. And I met Casey Veach and I heard about Michael because I just didn't want to play three sports. And then I started thinking about it. It's like, you know, football, those two days in August. I'm like, man, I think I'm going to drop football. So that was Michael was influential and he was definitely a mentor to me. But uh, guys like Steve BC, I don't know if you remember Robert Allen, Dan Danny Scott, drums older brother. Uh, was a big influence on me. Uh, but th yeah, those guys started. I was I was just trying to hold it down until the real ballers got there. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you you go to, you're at, you're at South Lakes and and you were two two to three years of the three peat, right? With Troy? No, actually, just one. We started the whole journey. So we started. Troy was a freshman when I was actually a senior. Oh man, that's yeah. right. He, you know what? You guys always took him under his wing, so I thought you guys were closer in age. Yeah. <laughs> well, Troy was a man child, so it was a little different. I was a late bloomer. Like, you know, Troy was like full grown as a freshman, just beast mode. I, I was a little late bloomer. <laughs> uh, so what are your memories of that, that those those years of playing for South Lakes? Man, it was a, I think it was a little bit of a roller coaster, but that's how life is. You know, life is sometimes a roller coaster, whether it's in, you know, like sports, athletics, business. Uh, so I say it was up and down. Uh, my JV year was phenomenal. My sophomore year at Irving Green as a coach, and it was phenomenal. It was transformational. You know, I, I went from playing like more of like a forward spot. He put me at point guard. You know, I was a six one player at that point. My sophomore year, he had confidence in me. He saw something, and he put me as point guard, and that really developed my confidence and my skill set. Junior year was kind of rocky. You know, we had a great talent, great team. We just couldn't jive together, and so it was just a a colossal like mess of a headache. But we had a lot of talent, but we couldn't put together. Uh, right. Senior was phenomenal but I broke my ankle like about two weeks before my senior year. And so before my senior year started, I got a snapped ankle, uh, but it was the journey of getting back, overcoming adversity and came back, you know, for like the last couple of weeks of the season and still had a great run. You know, we went all the way to the state semifinals my senior year and in that short span, I was named an all state player. So it was a good little segment. Right. Um, so that was kind of my, my journey there, a little bit roller coaster spot, but great people, Wendell Bird, Coach Bird. Uh, still a Facebook friend, touch base with those guys a bit. And so it, it's awesome, man. It's a community. It's a family, as you know. Right. Well, who, who did you get after high school? Who did you get to shape up that hairdo of yours? I mean, I wasn't around anymore. Yeah, yeah, you did a good work, man. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> Your audience needs to know. Like, you got skills with it, right? And so, yeah, I definitely, like, in high school, it was like, man, you didn't want to get a, a tight haircut. You wanted a brain tight. And so I came home, I could still feel something. So I kind of bicked myself up and came to school. You were substitute teaching at the time. And I'm like, yo, BA. Like, and you're like, I'm going to up. Brought me I, to your house, trimmed I up, get me a fade, and I was on my way. It was great. 
I had totally forgotten about that until we had that uh, that podcast with uh, with uh, Julian. I, I had totally forgotten about that. But I used to do that at Penn State too with some of my teammates. Shape it up a little bit. Uh, so you you uh, graduate from the South Lakes. You get recruited. You go to Davidson, which I, I have here over my shoulder. Uh, talk about that recruiting process real quick. It was interesting. Matt Doherty was actually, and people remember him from North Carolina, right? You know, he was yeah. down there with the head coach, and he kind of run the gamut, you know, as far as a player and as a coach at North Carolina. But he recruited me. He was the assistant coach there. And so he brought me in. I identified with him a lot. You know, he's 6'8", kind of do-it-all player. And that was my niche. I was 6'9", tried to do it all, probably a jack-of-all-trades, master of none. Uh, yeah. But, like, he, he brought me along. and But when I got there, he actually left. So I never got to play with him as the assistant coach because he had left to take a job at Kansas, if I believe. Uh, that was the timing of it. But that was the journey. Got to Davidson, got recruited through that process. I signed early. I was a late bloomer. Like really where I made my mark was during my between my junior and senior year, I went up to five star camp, uh, which is quite different than the circuit they run these days with the yeah. camp and, uh, and programs. But was up at five star. I uh, had a really great showing. Uh, started to get recruiting by a number of schools. And, and I probably had inflated. Now, let's let's get clear here, man. I had an inflated view of who I wanted to be, right? <laughs> and I was college was still just like, uh, you know, in my mind, I was like that ACC player. Clearly, I wasn't. But in my mind, I was, right? Right. So, uh, but I wanted the security. And so I signed before my senior year. And so I, I, I could have maybe developed more, had some more opportunities. But I wanted to sign. It was probably good I did because I broke my ankle. But it turned out, man, I, I, you know, I didn't realize at the time, but God had a good plan for me. I ended up going to Davidson College. Uh, and again, man, BA, that was a roller coaster. So I've learned about roller coasters in life. And even at Davidson College, it was a little bit of a roller coaster. But it was a great experience. Love the college. You, was it one of those things you, you'd go back and do it again? I think most guys would say that. Yeah, man, I would. I would do it again. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade those experiences to the world. I had growing up to do. Uh, the culture I had growing up to do, and we kind of grew together. You know, Coach McKillop, who was there for 30 years and he retired about a year ago, and actually he was grateful. I had a chance to have dinner with him about a week and a half ago, which was a fun little reunion. Uh, but, like, look, he grew up a little bit during that period. I grew up immensely, and he was a great coach that helped mentor me to get to that place of growing up. So it wouldn't trade it for world. Right, right. And then you got a, you got a cup of coffee uh, in, in, in the league and playing overseas. Like, were you in the Philippines? Is that right? I played a couple places, played the CBA, which was, you know, for, for the your generation on Facebook will know it. The other people be like, oh, it's the G League, you know, back then. But it was one league. There wasn't like five leagues. There was 10 teams that filtered in the NBA. So I played in the CBA for a couple years, played out in Omaha, Nebraska, Yakima, Washington. Man, don't go to those places, man. Don't visit them, man. That's not a travel guide place. But uh, and then also played for the Ider Stamp team. Also played in the Philippines um, uh, for a bit and had some opportunities over in Spain. But you know, I played with the Clippers very shortly. You know, blew up an ankle going there. So yeah, I had a good experience for a couple of years of playing pro ball. It was great. So so like when you when you do that, uh, I know you're, you're as a life coach. You talk about setting goals, and your goal was NBA. You don't reach it, but you had to have learned so many things in those experiences, jumping around from team to team. Yeah, you do. You, you learn quite a bit. Um, it's a different culture. You know, college world, I think, was a little sheltered. Good community college at Davidson. But the real world's tough, man. It's aggressive. It's strong. It's business. It's expectations. And pro basketball is no different. You got a lot of people out for themselves. And in some ways, you got to be out for yourselves. And so you, you tend to become a little bit more self-interest, self-focused. And I, I had to break through that, B.A., to be fair. Like, I definitely had to come to a reckoning in my own early, you know, 20s about who was really number one and how I really saw myself. I had a lot of personal growth to go do. And so, uh, you know, that's really a lot of what I coached you is really getting connected to you, the power of you and understanding your purpose, not just from a perspective here on earth, but also God's perspective for you. So I kind of bridged that gap and I needed that in my life. You know, so I learned a lot about that personal growth and development space in my early 20s through professional basketball, you know, through going through some injuries. You know, and not only do I blow up my ankle with the Clippers, I came back and went to Yakima, tore up my quad tendons, came back, went to the Philippines, hurt another ankle, came back. And I'm like, this has got to be it. And then I ran into some back issues with my lower lumbar. So uh, you learn a lot of how to overcome adversity and how to really, you know, get your belief systems in order. So that was a big transformational journey for me during that period of my life. Right. Man. Now, you didn't get into coaching right out of college. Uh, were you with 24-Hour Fitness? Is that your first job out of college? Or? 
No, after, after I got done playing basketball a few, few years, I took a flyer and I just got into doing sales for 24 hour fitness. Uh, that just flew off the shelf, man. Like, uh, just could sell things like, uh, my mom said ice to an Eskimo. So it just flew baby. And, uh, <laughs> you know, got really good, did sales and became like their top salesperson and, you know, gratefully still top five in their whole company history in terms of sales. But, you know, like when you score a lot of points, they want to give you more opportunity that grew into leadership management. And along that journey of almost 20 years, man, I, I just really, I really fell in love with leadership, Brian. I really yeah. fell in love how to lead people, influence people, and build teams. Well, well, you've mentioned it several times now. So, and that's uh, overcoming adversity. Um, that has to be a huge part of what you teach. It is, man, and it's a uh, it crosses age groups. Like I coach a lot of Gen Zs and millennials. But I also coach a group of like, uh, let's say Gen Xers, and that's more my generation, right? I think Our generation. Gen yeah, I'm on the Xers. I'm on the high end. <laughs> yeah, I, I would have thought your generation didn't line. I, that's a whole different generation, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. I'll I'll own that. I'll own that. <laughs> uh, but I do. I coach through that exploratory space a lot of times on getting clarity on you, your vision, your goals, and those experiences are like landmarks for me to help coach people through it. And not just tell them, because people in coaching, coaching is not like consulting or giving advice, man. It's helping people really explore them and get to the core of what they want, why they want it, how they're going about it, you know, so they can get to that end result. And so uh, it definitely all comes into play, man. It all is part of the equation. Well, I know uh, I, I just did a podcast with my personal business coach that I hired in 2016, and she she was amazing, wonderful. She's the reason why I'm here in St. Pete, Florida. Um, I'm sure I'm guessing now you tell me if I'm wrong, but that a part of the, maybe the first session or two that you do with your clients, it has to be, a, a revolve around their why. It's a piece of it, right? It, you know, when you're doing coaching, you're trying to help people get clarity, you know, clarity. When I talk about coaching, you know, and even in business, whether it's business, life, leadership, vision, direction, it all starts with clarity. Like when we're not clear, we don't make the best decisions. We're not empowered to make the best decisions. It could be unclear how to handle the situation with a spouse or a wife or how to handle that business negotiation. Whatever it is, clarity is king. So the first session is it's about getting clear on what they want and why do they really want it? What do you really want and why do you really want it? And then let's get the reality of where you are compared to what you want and really where you really want to go. So once you get that space and you help people dig deep into that, past all some of the superficial layers we as people put up, and, and, you know, we as men tend to put them up a little higher, to be fair, right? And so once you get past all that, right, then you can really get to some meat. And then you can really see some transformation and really see people make the impact they really want to make. Yeah, You talk about the three pain points. Can can you go give us an uh, overview of that? I don't I don't want you giving out your, your free business, but I know yeah, the, the nature of your business, you can't give it all away. You have to go deep. So just the, the three, those three pain points. You know, I look at pain points around clarity of vision where people aren't clear. I look at belief barriers, like not just like beliefs abstractly. We really coach to limiting beliefs versus empowering beliefs. And so it really helps people get clarity in situations where they're limited and they're thinking in their belief system and where they really need to embrace an empowering belief system. Those are those are definitely pain points that are recognizable across levels. Um, and, and then the next part is really the kind of coach through the disjointedness or how to bring unity or harmony between you and your vision. And that that's an important component. Um, so we coach deep through those pain points. And, you know, and then when you get into the leadership side of it, well, there's a whole other segment of helping people grow in their leadership space and how they're influencing and inspiring people. So that becomes a spot, right? And leadership is cross. I mean, what I mean by cross is, look, dude, like we're all leaders. Like you're on this earth, you're a leader. You're influencing somebody. So how you go about that is your choice, right? And you're going to choose and you're going to come up with better skill sets and how to be a better influencer. So whether you're running a business, whether you're running a family, heck, man, even if you get your buddies and your bros, you're a leader and you're influencing people. So how do you show up your best for that? And, and we coach those pain points on what uh, comes into the equation in that one. Well, I read a quote that I love that you said is our best, best life comes from impacting others with our gifts and talents. I love that. Yeah, it's true. It really is, man. It's really, it really is. And I'm sure you've been on that journey before is we, we tend to get a little more me focused um, on a lot of things. And so how we impact others and our gifts to go do them. And that's the meat of it, man. Like when we're doing that, we're fulfilled. 
Yeah. yeah. So you, you say you work with a lot of uh, millennials and Gen Z. Uh, I don't like to generalize, but what do you find in those demographics that kind of runs true through through both of them, actually? You know what's interesting? One of the common themes I find is when you get to what people want sometimes from a behavioral perspective, man, it's like it's consistent sometimes. They're like, man, I just want to be able to be present in the moment. And it's how many people sometimes just struggle to be in the moment with somebody rather than kind of filtering stuff that's happened in their past, whether that's 10 minutes ago, 10 weeks ago or 10 years ago. Or they're just so cycled into thinking about the future and uncertainties and possibilities that they just can't be there with you in the moment. It's amazing across generation. There just seems to be a want to be like, I want to be connected. I want to be in that moment with people. But crap, man, there's so much sometimes going on up there. I can't clear the space to be there. It's an right. interesting paradigm I've seen a lot lately coaching people. Well, you know, it's interesting because I'm running into my friends who, let's say, are mid 40s to mid 50s. And the the word that I use and you actually use is feeling stuck. And that has to be a frustrating feeling. And maybe if I hadn't hired a coach in 2016, I would have felt stuck. But having that those sessions for a year just wow. gave me gave me vision. You know, and we met uh, every other week for a year um, and it was worth every dime. I, I, You know, and that's really why I wanted to talk to you, because I just think so many people, whether it's our generation or the younger generation, sometimes you need a coach and some maybe they're hesitant about what, you know, what cost is. But if you're investing in yourself, I, I don't think there is too high a cost to pay uh, for that. That's really interesting, Brian. You worked for a whole year, man. Great for you, man. I mean. Yeah. I know you're trying to get, gain from, you know, some thoughts on me, but if you're open, I, I love to just hear what you, what was the main things that transformed or shifted in you during that year that you're like, man, this was like, this was awesome. Um, a, a lot of it had to do with, you know, where, where, where I wanted to be in five years. And, yeah. um, you know, I'm in the mortgage business. The mortgage business is brutal. Uh, there've been times when I, I wanted to get out. Uh, but I still, as corny as it sounds, I still like helping people, you know, realize the American dream, which is home ownership. Um, yeah. but my coach was more, she was, she was, although she was mortgage focused, she wanted me to be a little bit more about me. You know, you just talked about that. Yeah. Um, cause I, I've always been outward facing first and not me facing. And, you know, like I was, and, and don't get me wrong, that five years between the time I started with the coach. And when I got here to Florida, there was definitely some some real low points in, in that time period. And sometimes I even forgot about some of the things that I had learned from the coach. But it had manifested everything that we talked about for that year was manifesting in the background of my brain. Mm. Um, and I just uh, it just kept kept me focused on on what I want to do. And then when the opportunity to present itself, ironically enough, during COVID it was like, all right, well, you know, we're stuck. We can't go out, and you you maybe even had somewhat of a pivot too when you when you uh, when COVID hit, and uh, it was just like, well, you know, I, I can be alone in cold or I can be alone in warm. Um, a lot of it had to do with uh, my father who lost two of his four best friends, and he always needed a foil. To, he needed a straight man, and so I figured if I was closer, that would help. Now I'm glad I did. Um, and I thought about actually thought about Austin. Uh, like I looked into Austin, I went down there. I just didn't have the real estate contacts in Austin that I, I had in Florida. Um, so I, you know, when I got here for a year, I didn't realize that I'd reached my goal of being in Florida in, in five years or less. And then once I realized it, I called my coach, who I kind of just, you know, I would keep in contact with her on her birthday or something like that. But I needed her to know that that time spent was not wasted. And I'm sure you have those kinds of experiences too with your clients, right? That's probably the most rewarding thing, right? Yeah, it is. When you see results they want to get, and sometimes they're clearly defined and sometimes they get clearer as you coach, but it's powerful, man. When you start seeing people break through and shift their beliefs, shift their mindset, start achieving more, accomplishing more. I mean, I, I just think of a client too, who just got a huge raise because of a shift in mindset that we coached through, understanding his value, his worth, 
how to communicate that, what that looks like. And when you see that smile, um, not only that they, they got a result, you know, here, but they also saw a shift in the way they think and the believe and their mindset. Man, it's just it's it's joyous, man. It's 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 like on the basketball court, you know, when you coach someone how to make a layup and you're like, they did it. You're like, yeah, you did it. You got it. <laughs> it's different when you're playing bigger stakes like the game of life. You know, it's just different. Right. Yeah. You said you said we uh, now when you started out, I'm sure it was just you doing one on one. So you have a team now. Is no, it's just me. It just me is a sense, you know, in, in 2020, you know, you talk about pivots and change, man. It was a uh, man, Brian, it was a it was a painful journey for me to be transparent. Like 2020 was a painful journey. Like it was a uh, if you ever study the story of the Eagle, it's phenomenal. I don't know if you know the play. I'm not. Uh -uh. It's, a, it's pretty cool because it's inspirational. I think maybe your audience. I'm writing it down. Yeah. You, I think your audience may identify with it, you know, in terms of what, you know, the bracket of life they're in. But, you know, the story of the Eagles is this, when it hits the age of 40, like it's almost done. It's almost ready to die. Like its beaks worn out, its talons are done, its fucked, uh, feathers are all tarred up. And what the eagle has to do, it has to go away to like a mountaintop experience. I don't know going dark like Aaron Rodgers, but it's got to go away. All right. Uh, but it goes away. And what it does, it kind of like self heals itself and it takes its beak and it just crushes it down to the nub. Like, that's kind of painful when you think about it. Yeah. And once it gets down to the nub, it, new life can bring forward. And so the beak can grow a new beak, sharp, strong. Then it can take that beak and start clearing off its talons, which is used to grip and claw and grab prey. And so those talons now become back to life. Then it uses those talons to peel off all the, the bad feathers that have been stuck and, and held to and, and restricting the body. And only then, can it go free and live another 30 years? And it's the simplest oh. times we go through in life, right? Sometimes we're driving and draining and going and striving. And it's that peeling back part where sometimes you got to get down to the nub and you got to let new things come forward and release yourself from a lot of the strains, the toxics, the hard part, the strain in order for you to be free. Well, sadly enough, it, sometimes life puts you in those events and you don't expect them. And, and that's really was my journey in 2020, man, it was painful. Um, uh, I was at the beginning part of a very painful divorce that was not something I was looking forward to something I hadn't imagined, but you know, it's like the, it's like the breakup of your family. And I mean, if I'm not careful. I'm a breakdown and crying here in this one. Cause it's still, it's still, right. you know, still part of it. I'm going to get a divorce. I get it. <laughs> yeah, man. It, it, it's, it's, it's a painful journey. And then a couple months after that in the early 2000s, when, you know, COVID hit. And so at that point I was a mid senior level, uh, you know, person for 24 hour fitness, you know, I was running the Austin market, Midwest market. Well, they went bankrupt and they eliminated my role, my job, my territory. So I had this kind of like, Whoa, you know, you, you're going through an emotional crisis you're going through a career crisis, financial um, crisis. Yeah, financial crisis. you got that right. Right. And so it's all there. And um, but it was in that journey uh, in the summer of 2020 that the vision of life coaching and creating this platform called Growth Time. And so Growth Time is a coaching platform to help people unlock and unleash their best life and leadership. So the vision of that came in the early 2020. And I just started life coaching. Probably like you did cutting hair. Like you probably know how to cut hair. You just probably told people you did, and they're like, "Okay, cut it." That's what I did in college. I was like, "I cut hair. I never cut hair. I just started cutting it." They're like you're good at it. I'm like, "Cool. Now I'll pay me, right?" And so, uh, <laughs> but I did that with life coaching. I just had a vision for you know, I went through a certification part, but I just started coaching people, and people started paying for it, and people started seeing change and shifts and results, and you know, awesome things were coming from it. And so that started me to continue down this coaching journey for the last, you know, three years, you know, two and a half, three years. So I've just been building, growing, but no, I'm still like kind of a, a solo, you know, kind of component, you know, program right here is what I'm running. Right. And it's not becoming overwhelming yet. Right. Because I have, have you thought about that? Because, you know, like it's hard to duplicate you. Yeah. Right. Um, so like in five, I'm going to flip it on you in five years. Like, where do you want your business to be? Yeah. I think in five years, there'll be, a, I see a lot of pieces come together. Like I'm working on a book that kind of will walk through and kind of the whole growth time journey. And so I could see that being like a, a connection point to a big audience. Right. And then that kind of filters into, if you go on the website, uh, coachqharwood.com or mygrowthtime.com, um, it filters into the growth journey to help people through that space. And there's pathways for that. 
So I could see in five years, you know, and then there's a business component. Like I'm recently getting into doing more business coaching, like business operational coaching. So that's kind of cool too. But in five years, I could really see in a sense of like uh, doing individual and group coaching and doing a lot of speaking and doing a lot of speaking to message the voice of growth time and what that means and how to help people through that journey. So I could see those kind of author, speaker, coach, I could see the, uh, you know, a, a part of it, you know, all coming together at some point, five years from now. Right. You throw it out there into that, into the atmosphere and it, it, you see it, you, you become it. Uh, so you, just to be clear, you do coaching, you do group training and you do public speaking, correct? Yeah, right. Yeah. As, well, you know, I, I haven't done it. I can't stress it enough, but pretend I've never had a coach and I'm on the bubble saying, you know, should I really invest? I'm feeling stuck. I really want to spend the money on the coach. Make me want you. Thank you. Make me want you. Yeah, yeah. you completely, man. I get you. Yeah. I get you. Yeah. Um, I, I would say this. It's kind of funny, but you necessarily don't need a coach. Okay. But what I would share with you, if you want someone who's going to be your advocate, if you want someone to help for guidance, if you want someone accountability, if you want to help with support, if you want someone who's your advocate on your team, team BA, you're going to want a coach. You're only going to go further faster with a coach than you will by yourself. So rather than trying to do it yourself and just run to Home Depot, like there's a journey for that. But man, I can tell you how many people and casualties lay out on the battlefield of life, never reaching their potential, never leaving a fulfilled life, never having the energy and the joy and what they truly desire inside because they try to go at it alone. They try to figure out my journey is going to be more about self-reliance rather than community independent trust to get me where I want to go, to get the most out of my life. And so you don't need it, but wouldn't you want it? Wouldn't you want someone to be on your team to help you realize your potential, get to those goals or results, to guide, guide you? I mean, like, why wouldn't you want that? Why would you kick that to the curb? Why would you not want that? Man, that's so well said. You, you must be a coach, man, because you're good <laughs> at it. <laughs> Uh, so I, I want to hear about the kids. Uh, I, I don't have any kids, man. I, my my high school friends and my my brother's high school friends. I want to know the kids, like you know, what's going on there. Yeah, I've got a 21 year old boy. Um, I've got a 17 year old son, and then I got a 16 year old daughter. Uh, so Jacob, Kristen, Grace, uh, they all got involved in sports for years. Uh, the older boy is still trying to figure out maybe baseballs and options, kind of up in the air with what his journey looks like. Uh, the middle son's going to be a senior. He's really into basketball. So uh, he goes after it, right? We still battle one-on-one. -on -one. I still tell him it's going to be a few more years before he can beat me. And he still says, That man oh, strength, that old school game. You can't beat that. Way. Yeah. And like, you know, uh, <laughs> I still play. Uh, uh, I still hoop about two times a week. So it's, Are you uh, serious? It's, I do, With man. all those injuries? See, you're a gym rat. You were always a gym rat. I yeah. was not. I was a gym rat to get the scholarship. And after <laughs> after college, I was done. So uh, good for you. Yeah, I, I still enjoy it. And what it does, I mean, the reason why it was one of my dreams growing up is, you know, I, I wanted more of a connected relationship with my kid growing up than I think was maybe where I felt in my own journey. But one of that ways would be sports. So I want to be able to play pickup games with my kid. And right. so that dream is important to me. Like, No, that makes a lot of sense. And, and what sport is your daughter in? Uh, she's a volleyball, man. You know, she's a, what I call a volleyholic. You know, she's volleyholic, man. That's it. Well, you, you know, Penn State has like a, a nationally iconic uh, volleyball program, right? I'm just saying. I, I'm just saying, man. If you, if you want to shoot her a scholarship and you're someone there, man, we'll, we'll gladly accept it right now. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll share this with Coach Katie because uh, she's definitely going to be tall, I'm sure, right? <laughs> she's, You know what? She's getting there. I, I'm concerned as she plateaued a little bit. She's she's five seven setter, which is okay for a setter size, right? But she's not right. like six eight, six nine, or even close, right? So I think she's plateaued a little bit. She's sixteen, but you never know if you might get another inch or two. Right, right. And how 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 involved in the like? Can you sit there in the stands and just clap lightly? Are you the? Let's go. You know what? I think it's a mix. To be fair with you, I think with uh, and it's based upon the kid's personality. I right. Good for you. My daughter's game, she's going to be like, dude, you better chill, right? Right. If I'm like fist bump and chest bump and my boy, he's just like, well, yeah, that's how we do it. We bring it, right? Yeah. It's probably a little different in how I go about it, right? And how far how far I am away from the game is a different one, too, right? If I'm far away, you can be loud. If you're not, then, well, you know, if you're closer, right. the audience is quiet. They might want you just to chill. 
like any good coach, you 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 cater it to the the, the player. You you know, I I love it. I love it. So if someone uh, wanted to utilize uh, your coaching, uh, how would they get in contact with you? I mean, the easiest way is you can just go on my website, you know, uh, coachqharwood.com and just go on there. There's a little place you can fill out, you know, just send it, send information. I do a free minute, you know, 25 minute. I call it consult a touch point, but really it's just to get to know somebody like, look, I don't even know if I'm the right fit for people. And if I'm not the right fit and we're not the right fit, I just say no. I, mean, I don't want to waste your time or my time or anyone's money on that. But if we are a good fit, then we usually kind of connect for like an hour and a half, man. We go deep. You can experience the power of what coaching really does, how that can change and shift where you are. And then we work from there. You know, we build out what you feel that you need and what I think we need in order to get you where you want to go. And first of all, help you know where you really want to go. Man, that's that's awesome. And ever since we did that South Lakes basketball union, I wanted to talk to you because number one, your energy is like next level. And number two, I just think coaching on any level is so selfless. Um, I've, I've done it. I've dipped my toe in it. I'm, uh, you know, like, it's just, it's just not my, my jam other than like maybe a one-on-one. If a kid asked me, can you teach me something in basketball? Always will say yes to that, but, uh, kudos and tip of the hat to you for, for doing what you do. And, uh, uh, best of luck to you in the future. It's great catching up. I'll make sure to tell, uh, the, the, the second accident in the Allen family, you said hello. Let's go, man. Let's do it. Man. <laughs>